Today, you're gonna learn about HTTP status code 504, what it is, why it's important, and how to deal with it. We're also gonna do a comprehensive HTTP protocol overview and do a quick rundown on kind of how the internet works and how all these status codes affect your website. I'm Tommy Griffith with clickminded.com. Let's get going. So before we dive into HTTP status code 504, I wanna talk a little bit about the HTTP protocol basics and some of the stuff that drives the internet and that's affecting all the status codes that you're seeing on your website now. The internet is made up really of two core things and that's clients and servers, right? So you have clients, web clients, that's your browser, right? Maybe it's Chrome, maybe it's Firefox, maybe it's Safari. If you're a godforsaken human being, maybe it's Internet Explorer. But if you're, <laughs> you're usually accessing the internet through one of these clients, right? Whenever you request a website, you're usually making a request from a web server. You make a request and the server responds. That's happening every single time you're clicking a link. You make this request using what we call the HTTP protocol. Okay, so protocols are really just standards that everyone on the internet has agreed to. It's no different than English or Spanish or Chinese. It's a language that we've all agreed to, right? So a client makes a request to the server, what happens next? Status codes let us know whether the request was a success, a failure, or something in between, right? That's what an HTTP status code is. Okay, so let's jump into each one of these next. So the 100 block, these are informational requests. Uh, the 200 block, those are successful requests. The 300 block are gonna be for redirects, redirection. 400 block will be for client errors and 500 block will be for server errors. So that means the client made a good request, but the server didn't complete it. So something is wrong on the server side. Right? I'm in Chrome, I request the website. I did everything right on my end, but something's wrong with the server, right? So like a 500, an internal server error, maybe a 502, bad gateway, 503, service unavailable, 504, gateway timeout. The broad idea here is that 500 errors are server problems, not client problems. Okay, so HTTP status code 504, the gateway timeout. So again, the status codes on the 500 block mean it's a server error, not a client error, right? So this is a server error. A 504 means the server did not receive a response fast enough from a server it was making a request to and it timed out, right? So something down the chain messed up here and a timeout happened, right? Usually what this means is there's some type of application mishap going on. Uh, sometimes your timeout settings can be a little bit too tight and this can cause issues for you. It's basically another application that's causing the problem, right? Usually you need to contact your web host in order to get this one solved. Uh, you, you probably wanna bring up that you are seeing a 504 status response code and that you might wanna increase your timeout limits. Try that first, uh, that should solve the problem. And so that's it, that's really all there is to HTTP status code 504. So I hope that was useful. If it was helpful and if you learned something today, go ahead and click subscribe down below for even more digital marketing tactics and tips from us. If you're on YouTube, I'd love a comment. What'd you think? Are you seeing 504 errors on your site? Would love to hear from you. I read every single one. Finally, if you want our free comprehensive HTTP status code guide, along with a tool to check all of your URLs and the status codes that they're returning, go ahead and click that link down below to clickminded.com and get your free downloadable guide today. Thanks a lot.